Good evening, everyone. It is time once again for Scripture verse by verse. We're in the book of Daniel, and we are in Daniel chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. So grab your Bible, open it up to the book of Daniel, and turn to verse 1. And while you are doing that, That'll give me a minute to tell you about the Scripture Verse by Verse website. So as you're turning in your Bible, I hope you are listening to this. Because if you're turning in your Bible and you're listening to this program today, it's because you're interested in the Word of God. If you were not interested in the Word of God, you wouldn't want anything to do with me because that's all I give out and that's all I teach and that's all I have been teaching for 30 years. And the thing about the Scripture Verse by Verse website is 30 years of archives, studying, and messages are there for you. In fact, two times through the Bible, verse by verse, from Genesis through Revelation, are archived at thebibleversebyverse.com. So I hope you get a chance to check it out and... Uh, and begin a verse-by-verse -verse study with me. Now you can join me with, for these broadcasts, and that's wonderful. This is my third trip through the Bible, and I'm about four-fifths of the way through, I think, something like that. But uh, if you want to study the entire Bible, beginning in Genesis, you don't have to wait for me to start all over again on a fourth journey. You can start right now at thebibleversebyverse.com. Check it out. Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth, in Jesus' name, amen. We're going to look at a plot against Daniel here in chapter 6, which really probably isn't anything new. If you're God's servant, you can count on it. It pleased Darius. Darius was the ruler of the Medes and Persians. At this point, he is the most powerful man in the world. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom. Now, the number of princes or governors fluctuated as needed, and, uh, but at this point there's 120 governors that ruled certain sections of the empire of the Medes and the Persians. Verse 2, And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. So Daniel was the most powerful man in the world next to Darius, the king of the Medes and the Persians, because he was the top president. There were three presidents over the 120 governors, and Daniel was the number one president, which means he was sort of like vice president of the entire empire. And this is Daniel. God's man. Verse 3, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. And, uh, and so Daniel clearly was blessed by God with wisdom and the ability to rule and insight, and, and the president, or I should say the, uh, the empire, the emperor, Darius recognized this. He, he didn't want Israel's God, but he sure did want a man like Daniel who was under the control and blessed by the one true God because that benefited him. Of course, you know, this world has fallen, and as soon as one person is elevated about, above their fellows, there's often some jealousy, and that was the case here. There was jealousy against Daniel. Let's look at it. Verse 4. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault find in him, found in him. So the, his fellow leaders tried to find fault with Daniel so they could knock him down because he was the top president and they were jealous of his position. And they, they were jealous. They tried very hard to find something they could use against him so that he would lose his position. Which tells us that they were more concerned about themselves than they were their country, which is why they were not the top president themselves. The king's not stupid. 
he knows that Daniel genuinely was concerned about that empire and about the king. And these other jokers, they were not. They would do what was expedient, not what was right. And so they tried so hard to find something that they could use against Daniel. And they would remove the best man for the job. They didn't care. They'd get rid of him simply because he got more attention from the king than they did. Verse 5. Then said these men. They started talking among themselves. After trying to find fault with Daniel and coming up empty. <clears throat> then said these men. We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel. Except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Daniel wasn't doing anything wrong. So they're going to try to convince the king that the religion he practices is dangerous to the empire. And they know better than that. But that's what they're going to use. Because they can't use anything else against Daniel other than his religion. They've got to find fault with his religion. They've got to make up something bad about his religion to try to turn the king against Daniel. And if they would have been honest men who really cared about their country, they would have been happy that Daniel's religion was obviously good for the nation. Verse 6. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. Well, they begin with some flattery. They come up with a scheme and they could not wait to implement it. So they head to the king right away. They didn't waste any time. They came up with this idea. We're going to get Daniel as regards his religion. And so they hightail it over to the king. And look at, look at, the, look at the way they approach this thing. Verse 7. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save of you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, to say that all the leaders came up with this plan is a flat-out lie. Daniel wasn't in on it. His three friends were not in on it either. So they are lying. And then they use flattery. These conspirators flatter the king with their suggestion concerning their new law. They knew what to use against uh, Daniel. They knew how to work their plan. They used flattery. And no one had to twist the king's arm to convince him that it was a good idea, too. Hey, this law is a great idea. People can only petition me for 30 days. They can't pray to a god. They can't go to any other man. Just me. Verse 8, now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which alters not. Let's make this official, king. Let's just not do this thing verbally. Let's get it in writing so that it's firm, because once the king put his royal stamp on this law, it can never be reversed. That's just the way it was. No law of the Medes and Persians could ever be repealed. And so these men know that if they can get the king to sign this law, Daniel's a goner. Verse 9. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. He didn't even check into the ramifications of it. He didn't investigate. He didn't do anything. The king was carried away by the zeal and flattery of these leaders. And so he signed it without carefully considering the possible effects of this new law. 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Daniel didn't change his routine. He just did what he always did. No, it's now against the law, but he didn't care. 
You're not going to let the law of man affect his walk with the Lord. And you better not either. Because that's putting man before God. And Daniel also did not organize a protest march against this new law. He didn't organize a protest. He didn't get upset. He simply continued to worship and pray to to the Lord like he always had done. He didn't skip a beat. No law would stop him from worshiping God or praying to God. That was a stupid law. And if they want to pass it, they can pass it. That's fine. And there's nothing Daniel can do about it. But he's not going to obey it. He's going to do what's right in the eyes of God, come what may. Verse 11. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Daniel did not hide his devotion to the Lord God. And as a result, it was easy for these men to catch him in the act. They knew he would do this. It was the perfect setup. And so far it looks as if their devious little plan is going very well. Verse 12. Then they came near and spoke before the king concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who shall ask a petition of any god or man within 30 days, save of you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? And the king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which alters not. Absolutely. The king didn't hesitate to answer, Yes, I sure did sign that law. It was a great law. Really fed my ego, you know. So yes, I signed that law. It's official. He had no idea that these rulers had not just set Daniel up to be murdered, but had set the king up and that he walked right into their trap. And that's what they did because the king loved Daniel. He respected Daniel so much and they have set the king up to turn against his friend Daniel. He's not going to be very happy, but there's nothing he can do about it. But boy, was he trapped. No wonder they're not the top president like Daniel was. Look at these jerks. Thinking only of themselves. They weren't thinking about the king. They weren't thinking about the king's feelings. They weren't thinking what was in the best interest of the, of the empire either. They were just totally self-centered. So verse 13, Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regards not you, O king, nor the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. So with great joy, no doubt, they told on Daniel. And in their accusation, they imply that Daniel prays because he has contempt for the king. That, it wasn't about having contempt for the king. But that's what their implication is. He has contempt for you. That's why he prays. No. It's because of his long-standing devotion to God. So they're trying their best to get the king to hate Daniel. Verse 14. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself... Why did I ever sign that thing? And he set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. He tried everything that he could think of to save his friend Daniel. He knew that Daniel was a good man. And he valued his advice. So he looked for a loophole somehow to save his life. But there would be none. See, he let his pride rule his thoughts and his decisions and any time we let our pride govern our words and our actions we create problems and that's what happened with king darius 15 then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king know o king that the law of the medes and persians is that no decree or statute which the king establishes may be changed so they're just dogging the king I mean, they're starting to apply pressure. They didn't care about the king's faith. They knew that he liked Daniel. And they knew why he liked Daniel. He was a reliable, good man. 
but they didn't care about the king they didn't care about the kingdom so they apply pressure for the king to act on this law you got to do it verse 16 then the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions now the king spoke and said unto Daniel your God whom you serve continually he will deliver you the king couldn't delay any longer he had to execute Daniel he had to but he but he did it with sort of a roundabout prayer that Daniel's God would save him he wasn't counting on his God to save Daniel if Daniel is going to be rescued it's going to be his God that's going to pull it off no Medo-Persian God so-called could do the job and he knew that verse 17 and a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den and the king sealed it with his own signet and anybody who broke that seal was put to death and with the signet of his hand of his lords that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel and notice how Daniel didn't protest Daniel did not put up a fuss he just calmly accepts God's will whatever it might be he trusts in God all the way see he he obeyed God he did what was right in the eyes of God and that's all you can do as a Christian today is do what is right in the eyes of God that's all you should do and let him take care of the details and if you're a preacher God help you God gets you out of the pulpit if you try to think about what people want and then base your sermons on that you do what pleases God and you take whatever ramifications come from that that's a faithful man of God see that's a faithful Christian but Daniel didn't put up a fuss he just calmly accepts God's will for his obedience whatever it might be if his devotion to God means that he's going to glorify the Lord by his suffering and death well then that's the way it has to be but he knew he couldn't disobey God to save his own neck that wasn't an option 18 then the king went to his place palace I should say and passed the night fasting neither were instruments of music brought before him and his sleep went from no entertainment for the king that night no good food no nice supper no entertainment after supper nothing the king was actually more upset than Daniel Daniel was calm knowing that he was right with God I mean if he's going to suffer in the will of God then so be it and that's the attitude we have to have too if we're going to suffer in the will of God fine then that's the way it goes you know when I switch my view on the rapture um, from pre-tribulation to uh, post-tribulation I mean I knew I was going to get it and I did I lost 75 whatever it was percent of my my income when I did that my church because they were all into that but I had to be true to God that's just the way it is so you know you just do what God wants you to do you speak the truth you do what is right and if and if that means suffering in some manner well then it does verse 18 actually I read verse 18 didn't I but Daniel was calm and the king meanwhile he was tormented with worry and probably also guilt for being I don't know for being so prideful and letting his pride get the best of him verse 19 then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions boy the king he didn't sleep much that night and that may have been the longest night of his life and so he gets up as soon as morning comes and he runs to the lion's den got to check on Daniel 20 and when he came to the den he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel and the king spoke and said unto, unto Daniel O Daniel servant of the living God is your God whom you serve continually able to deliver you from the lions the king was so nervous that his voice shook and notice how he calls Daniel's God the living God he's the living God Daniel's devotion it seems has had a real impact on the king 
because he he behaved himself in accordance with what he believed and that's a powerful testimony especially when it's going to cost you something no one in their right mind would suffer and die for an idol only for a God that they knew was God and they knew was very much alive 21 then said Daniel unto the king O king live forever Daniel as calm as ever answers the king from inside the lion's den notice how kind Daniel is as well he's not upset with the king for his pride He's not upset with the king for his pride that got him into this mess. Daniel is full of faith and full of the love of God, even toward the one who caused him this trouble, or potential trouble anyway. Look at verse 22. It says, My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me and also before you O king have I done no hurt it is against it is against God's law for us to break the laws of the state as a rule unless the laws of the state command us to break the laws of God Daniel it's true broke the law of the state but he did it in order to keep the law of God therefore even though the government found him guilty God found him not guilty and spared his life and that's what he's telling the king right now I didn't do anything wrong not in the eyes of God I didn't your your law was unrighteous not my behavior there's a higher court than the state or the federal government verse 23 then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den so Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God it was faith that saved him he believed in his God how did you know that he believed in his God? Because he did what was right in the eyes of God. And he was willing to take the, the, uh, the lumps for doing it, which turned out to be nothing. But he didn't know that. He lived by faith. Daniel's obedience, which proved that his faith was real, is the thing that saved him. His faith was accompanied by good works and faithfulness. So it was his faith that saved him. That's the testimony of the Lord himself. But his faith was seen in connection with good works because faith without works is dead. Don't say you believe God if you don't act according to his word and confess when you fail because you don't believe God then. Verse 24. And the king commanded and they brought those men which had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions them their children and their wives and the lions had the mastery of them and broke all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den man don't tell me that Daniel was spared because those lions were not hungry Daniel was spared because an angel protected him but no angelic protection for the guilty who don't trust God their families evidently were in on it as well at least they must have known about the conspiracy and therefore could have reported it to the king and should have but they didn't anyway they were all ripped to shreds before they even hit the bottom of the den proven beyond all doubt that Daniel's deliverance was a miracle verse 25 then King Darius wrote unto all people nations and languages that dwell in all the earth peace be multiplied unto you King Darius was inspired by the miracle of Daniel's deliverance 
So he's sending out a message, message throughout his whole kingdom. What is it? 26. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and steadfast forever. And his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even unto the end. Darius now believes in the Lord God. Daniel's living by faith and God coming through for him was all the proof that he needed. He knows that God is God. And he therefore commands all people in his empire to respect the one true God. He's smart. Darius is wiser than many politicians today because he understands that honoring God as God is good for a country. And he also enacted laws which were consistent with his faith. Verse 27. Talking about God, he delivers and rescues and he works signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? Darius confesses that God can do the impossible. God is not, it is so good to serve a God who is not bound by the laws of nature. Keep in mind that God invented the laws of nature and he can bend them whenever it suits his purposes. And whenever he does, that constitutes a miracle. Verse 28, so this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. The men who slandered and sought to destroy Daniel were themselves destroyed. And so the Bible says that those who dig a pit for the innocent or set a trap for the innocent, they shall fall in it themselves. And I think we'll stop right there for today. Just a reminder that you can study the entire Bible verse by verse from Genesis through Revelation at our website, which can be found at the Bible verse by verse dot com. And I just want to tell you how it's done. It's very simple. It can't be any easier. Just click on the book you want to study. And if you're a first time visitor, I encourage you to go to the book of Genesis and click on chapter 1 and begin a verse by verse study through the entire Bible all 66 books using my audio Bible commentaries but whatever you want to study whatever you, wherever you want to go that's how you do it you click on the book you click on the chapter you open your Bible you follow along as I teach it verse by verse that's found at the Bible verse by verse dot com and also keep in mind as you are studying the word of God if the word of God does bless you just remember that I'm not underwritten by a large church or a denomination, and I never have been. I don't take a salary, never have. This is a faith ministry, and it has been for 30 years. And so that means I depend on the prayers and, yes, the financial support of those who are blessed by the Word of God. But I don't beg for money. I just make it known what the Word of God says concerning that issue so if you are blessed and God does lead you to give I would appreciate that very much and you can do that at the Bible verse by verse dot com just click on click on the uh, donate button at the top of the front page and give as the Lord may lead you that again is found at the Bible verse by verse dot com make sure you check it out make sure you begin that verse by verse study with me today if you have not already done that and I'd love to hear from you it would be wonderful it's always a great encouragement to hear from those who are studying the Word of God with me. One more time, the Bible, verse by verse dot com. I'm out of time, so I'll see you next time. We'll pick it up in Daniel chapter 7. Until then, Michael Moret for Scripture, verse by verse. Thanks for spending this time with me. So long, everyone. <laughs>